What's up guys, I'm Kenny from Upscale Lures and this is the F3 show, the first Fishing Friday show, episode number 27 where I talk about fishing news and a little bit of news about my company Upscale Lures. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Let's get started. Number one, it is the video pick of the month. The world's largest 3D printer printed the world's largest solid object, which was a fishing boat. It was a 25 foot, 5 thousand pound fishing boat the print took 70 hours to print used about five thousand pounds of carbon abs they also said that it would cost half the price if it was made out of steel so it's cutting down the time it's cutting down the price pretty incredible technology that they can 3d print something that size that is that's insane i'm curious to know how tough is it is it something we'll be able to buy in the next year or so? Or is there more work to do? Uh, is it is durable steel? You know, who knows? Maybe someday we'll be we'll be three D printing boats in our backyard or something. Pretty crazy to think about. But if you guys are interested, the link will be below so you guys can check out the news video. Our number two, it is the fishing news of the month. An eight year old girl from Idaho caught the new catch and release record rainbow trout. She fought this thing for 30 minutes. It measured over three feet long. Pretty incredible. If you guys are interested in watching the whole news article, I will leave the uh, link below so you guys can check that out. For number three, it is the Upscale Lures News of the Month, and I've been working on a new 3D printed bobber design. I printed out of PLA. Uh, pretty durable stuff. Um, I did do... Uh, a clear coat on it after I painted it just to make it a little bit tougher. Uh, it's, you know, it's not as tough as, you know, say the cyber truck. I wouldn't recommend uh, slamming it with a sledgehammer. But uh, it is, it is uh, pretty tough. You got a little flex to it and it does cast pretty far. That's, that's one thing I wanted is that it casts far without having to add split shot to it. There's other bobbers out there that you cast them and they don't go past your fishing rod. You got to add a half ounce of split shots just to be able to lob it out there where you need it to go. Not with this one. It is uh, designed to be heavy enough to cast farther. So I was pretty impressed with how they worked and the performance of the bobber. Uh, me and my buddy Jordan did pretty good on our uh, fall fishing trip last month. We caught a ton of nice crappie on this thing. Uh, 9 to 11 inch crappie, caught some nice perch, some nice bass, uh, held up pretty good, proven to catch some fish. So if you guys are interested in 3D printing it up, I will leave all the links below. That will go to Thingiverse, so you can download the STL file, uh, gives you all the instructions of how to 3D print it up, what infill to use, what material I used, and that will be in the video description below. Dang, that is a nice fish. Number four, catch of the month, Joe caught this beautiful 49, over 49 inch musky in Ontario, Canada on Cliff Lake. That is a dandy of a musky. Uh, congratulations, Joe, on that catch. And uh, thanks for sharing. I do appreciate it. And if you guys would like your fish picks to be featured on the next F3 show, make sure to send them on over to our email and uh, we'll possibly get those posted up on a future episode. For number five, it is the featured item of the month, and we are going back to my 3D printed bobber. I'm gonna go into a little bit greater detail about how I designed this thing. So like I was saying, I designed it to be heavy enough so it would cast far, and then I also designed it, even though that it's a little bit heavier to make it cast a farther distance, it does still lie flat on the water. The reasoning behind that is that if you have a bobber like this in the water, and if it's wavy or windy, uh, it's kind of hard to tell when you have a fish on, right? I don't know if, if you guys have been bobber fishing, and you know you have a you have a fish tugging on it, you don't, and it's going down, but it doesn't go all the way underneath the water. You're staring at it. You're like, do I have a fish on or not? I can't. I can't tell. You know, because it's just it's just moving up and down, and you don't know is it the waves, is it the fish? You don't know. So I designed this one specifically to lie flat, so the moment you get a fish 
messing with your bait, it starts popping up off the water. So you you know the exact moment you get a fish on, uh, you'll you'll be able to know. So it'll it'll tilt up. So I think that uh, that's something I wanted to design in the bobber, and uh, I think it works really well. And the stability of this is is pretty solid. So I did test it out where you can put. I don't know what size split shot it was, but if you do like to have a little split shot on uh, on your baits with the hook or whatever, it still does lie flat. You know, if you have a big old honking uh, split shot on it, it will stand up like this. And you know, if that's how you prefer how to fish it, you know that that's fine too. But so you have you have that option. I designed it to cast far, to lie flat, and. Designed it to be a little bit bigger profile. I did a 10 inch bobber. I think that makes it a little bit easier to see in the water at a farther distance. My buddy brought this up that it'd be cool to have like a glow in the dark version, which they do have glow in the dark uh, filament that you could print this out on. So that's something that I could try at, uh, at another time. Or if you guys are interested, you could get some 3D printed filament and test that out. So when you're fishing in the dark, or fishing at dusk or fishing in uh or if you're fishing in the morning uh, a glow-in-the-dark uh film it will definitely make it a little bit more visible so if you guys are interested in 3d printing this up make sure to check out the description below i'll leave everything you need down below for number six it is the question of the month what is your favorite fish to target in December? So I'm curious to know, uh, depending on where you live in the country, in the world, what fish are you specifically targeting in December? For here in Wisconsin, uh, it's a little tough. We don't, we can't, we're not quite ice fishing yet, but we're not, the regular fishing's kind of slow, the water's cold. So what I like to do is usually go down and fish Lake Michigan, um, I'm pretty close to Lake Michigan and I'll fish off some of the piers, some of the harbors. And right now it's pretty good for brown trout if you put the time in. Um, was it a couple years ago? Last year, two years ago. I uh, went out there and did some casting with my Big Norma Spinner. With three casts, I uh, ended up latching up with a pretty nice brown trout. Ah, that is unbelievable. I'm pretty sure it is a brown. Okay, I gotta get that in that. <sighs> Woo! I got him. <laughs> Holy sh! There we go, guys. Finally, just redeem myself. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful freaking brown. Well, if you guys would let me know what your favorite fish is to target in December, leave it in the comments. I'd be curious to know. Uh, what you guys are uh, going for in December? You know, it's kind of kind of a weird month. At least for here in Wisconsin, like I was saying, it's like it's an in-between month. We don't quite have ice, and it's almost kind of too cold to be too cold to be bass fishing. Unless you're like, uh, I suppose around here would be uh, live bait. You know, you go out with some big old shiners and some bobbers. And uh, that that would be about your best luck here in Wisconsin. Uh, potentially way north Wisconsin, you might be ice fishing, I think. You know, way, way north. But not here in uh, southern Wisconsin, not quite yet. So make sure to, uh, you know, leave those comments below. I'd be interested to check them out. And number seven is the lure giveaway winner of the month. Your email is right here. If this is you, make sure to send us an email and we'll get that lure shipped out to you. It is just the last five uh, characters of your email. I'm not putting the whole thing out there. If you guys are interested in winning a future uh, lure giveaway, which happens every single month, you can sign up for our First Fishing Friday newsletter. Uh, I will leave a description down below so you can sign up for that. That is episode number 27 of the First Fishing Friday newsletter show, podcast, YouTube video show on the internet. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next episode.